In Unreal 5, why do I use volumetric fog in every single scene? It's because volumetrics and fog are great tools to add depth to your renders. And whether you realize it or not, haze and fog are used every single day on set of your favorite Hollywood movies. And now I hate this term, but a lot of people have asked me, how do I make my shots look cinematic? And this is one of those key elements that you need in your shots. But if you come from old school VFX, know that volumetrics come in really noisy and can take a really long time. That's where Unreal comes to the rescue with fast, real-time volumetrics with zero noise. And I'm not kidding. But there's two big problems. One is that the system is kind of hidden and spread out between a bunch of different menus. And number two, how do you art direct your volumetrics to improve the lighting in your shot? So today, you're gonna learn the ins and outs of the volumetric fog system in Unreal 5 and how to make your renders look like your favorite Hollywood movies. What's up, my name's Josh Tuner, and for the last eight years, I've worked as an artist and supervisor on movies like Star Wars, Dungeons and Dragons, and most recently, Across the Spider-Verse. And I've been using Unreal Engine on set and to make animated films of my own. And I make these videos because learning Unreal Engine for filmmaking is still really hard and it doesn't have to be. So first off, we're gonna go through all the settings that you need to know to get up and running with volumetric fog. Then we're gonna look at how to art direct your fog and even change the intensity per light and some tips to improve your lighting and cinematography in your scenes. And you're gonna wanna stick around to the end because I'm gonna show you exactly how I created these shots from my upcoming Mr. Free short film. I'll show you how to render volume metrics out in a separate pass and composite them together with some techniques that I use every day working on Hollywood films. So here we are in the IC VFX sample project. This is one of the sample projects I've included in my beginner's roadmap PDF where you can find the best free sample projects to download at every single skill level. And this is one of my favorite projects because it's a great intro into photorealism inside of Unreal Engine. And I've gone ahead and converted this from baked lighting to lumen. So first things first, let's press the quick add actors icon here and we'll go to the visual effects tab and select exponential height fog and just drag this into our scene. And you're probably thinking, well, this really didn't do anything in my scene, so I probably wanna increase the fog density, so I'm gonna set that to one, and it just kinda of goes black. Well, first off, that's because the fog in scattering color is set to zero, but you can see even when we raise that to one, it doesn't really do what we'd expect it to do. And this is because volumetric fog is actually a completely different tool set inside of Unreal, but it only exists and can be enabled by having an exponential height fog actor in your scene. This is confusing at first, but just stay with me. So I'm gonna reset the fog density back to 0.02 here, and I'm gonna scroll down until I can find the volumetric fog checkbox. So this is that separate tool set I'm talking about. I'm gonna enable this, and you can see right away, we have some really nice looking god rays in our scene. So why is that? If we take a closer look, this is because of our sunlight, which is a directional light in our scene. So if I enable and disable this light, you can see that this is what's causing the god rays. So let's take a deeper look inside of the properties of this light, and let's just search for volumetrics. And you can see we have two options. One is the volumetric scattering intensity and the other is cast volumetric shadow. So by using the volumetric scattering intensity, we can dial this per light and cheat it brighter or darker. But usually it's good to keep this at one by default. Now, because this is the sun, it's casting one gigantic directional ray into our entire world. So when I uncheck cast volumetric shadow, it's gonna ignore the cave walls and just flood our scene with light and look horribly ugly. <laughs> so let's undo that, but we'll come back to this setting when we talk about spotlights in just a minute. So now we can rotate our sun around and find a nice composition with our volume rays. But the best way to get good looking results out of this is by breaking up the light shafts, by having objects occluding our light and creating our own volumetric shadows. So this is looking pretty cool. I really like what we have on screen right here, but it's getting a little bit blown out on screen left. So what can we do to break up our fog? Well, obviously you could just start throwing in different cubes and planes, and let's start off with that. Well, we can just make different blockers inside of our scene. We can just move this in just a few seconds, we can start to block out whatever we don't like. So just by tweaking that around here, you can see, okay, we have some pretty interesting shapes here. But another way that I like to break up different areas like this is by using a gobo. So a gobo is also known as a cookie cutter. It's a little stencil that you'll put in front of a practical light fixture to break up the shape and add some interesting shadows from that light. So we can do the same thing in CG. So I'm gonna create a brand new material really quick and call this M underscore Gobo. And this is gonna be extremely basic, so I'm gonna make this two-sided. And all I'm gonna do is change our blend mode from opaque to mask. So now I'm gonna bring in a texture sample here. I'm gonna plug this into our new opacity mask. And let's just search for noise. There's a lot of default textures that just come with the engine. 
So we have this T noise 01. So now if I preview this as a plane, you can see this is our texture and it kind of resembles the idea of a gobo. So let's save this out. So now let's bring this into our scene. Let's just create a plane, scale this up and we'll drag our gobo material onto it. So now instead of using a giant cube to block out our light, we can drag this through our scene and be a bit more creative with how we want to cut out our light. Now, if we move this out of view of the camera, we can go back to our location settings and now we can drag this around and start to dynamically change how our god rays are cast. And now we can play around with this all in real time until you're happy with the result, which is why I love to use these features inside of Unreal. But now let's disable our sunlight and look at what we can do with spotlights. Let's take a closer look at that volumetric shadow. Now this is really cool. It gives us a nice swath of light that's not everywhere like we were getting with our directional light. But let's see what happens when we turn cast volumetric shadow on. You can see it does start to cast these really nice god rays. And now as we kind of rotate this through our scene or put it behind this different geometry, it casts some really clean volumetric light. So right away, people are going to freak out because you can get some pixelated looking fog at first. Sometimes the quality is not quite there, but it's actually really simple to adjust. If you ever need to increase the quality settings of your light rays, you're going to have to use the command variables. All you have to do is go to your output log where you can enter in some command variables and type in r.volumetricfog.grid pixel size. So if we type in any command and just throw in a question mark after it, you can see what the setting currently is inside of the scene. So here our grid pixel size is set to 16. So how this works is all of the fog in the scene is basically a grid of voxels or 3D pixels where there's pixels going in X, Y, and Z. So if you want to increase the resolution, we actually want to make each one of our voxels smaller. So we want to decrease this to increase the resolution. So the smaller the size of each grid pixel, the higher resolution we will have. So if we type in r.volumetricfog.grid pixel size, and I set this to four, this is gonna give us a much, much cleaner result. Now we can go even smaller than that. And we go all the way to two and we get some really crisp, really detailed voxels here. If you're not careful, this can really start to fry your GPU. So if you're ever worried about pushing this too far, if you just type in stat GPU, you'll get all of the different things calculating in your scene at a given time. And if we look here, we can see it takes 0.27 milliseconds to render volumetric fog in your scene. So when you say it's real time, it really is real time. Let's increase our resolution here. Let's set it to something like two, which is very high resolution. You'll see that this volumetric fog is going to start climbing up here. It's become the most expensive thing inside of our scene. It's actually gonna take six milliseconds per frame, which again, is still much cheaper than any sort of offline renderer. But if you have a lot of things going on, a lot of lights that are casting shadows inside your scene, it'll very quickly start to fry your GPU. So I like to set this to four by default. Usually this gives us a good trade-off between quality and performance. And you can always increase this inside of the movie render queue settings. So before we move on, here are the last four settings you need to know so that you can art direct your fog. You can tint the albedo of your smoke, although very quickly this starts to get into an unrealistic territory. So I almost never do this. Typically it's gonna be a much better idea to just grade your footage after the fact. And the same goes for extinction scale. If you set this up higher, it'll make your god rays more apparent. But Epic has done a good job of all these defaults being fairly true to life. So the more you can keep close to the default values, the more accurate your lighting is going to look. But it is worth noting our exponential height fog settings have an effect on our volumetric fog. So if we change the density here, it's also going to change our volumetric fog. And if we look at the fog height fall off, if we increase this, it'll keep most of the fog localized towards the ground for aesthetic reasons, can look good. But in the case of God rays, they should be the brightest, closest to the light source, which is going to be towards the sky and just be very intentional about when you want to change these and get away from the default setting. And now the last feature that I wanna talk about that I haven't really seen discussed elsewhere is that you can actually have fog in your materials. So I'm gonna add this sphere into our scene and right now it just has the default material, but I've built this volume fog material that if I apply here, is actually going to change our sphere into fog. So depending on where I move this, 
it's actually going to contribute into our voxel grid of volumetric. As we drag this sphere across our scene, it's going to create localized fog. We can make this really small and keep it in these little pockets, or we can make it really big and fill up our scene. So if you want to download this material so you can just drag it into your own scenes, I'll include a download link for free in the description on unrealforvfx.com. Let me open up this material and let's take a closer look. So to create a fog material, instead of our default surface material domain, we have to change it to a volume and we're going to change the blend mode to additive. This is going to give us the extinction option in our material, which changes how light will pass through our material. So the basic component of any fog material are going to be a sphere mask. A sphere mask is just a mask in 3D. And this is the guts of what's actually going on and driving everything here. And if you want to get crazy with it, you can also add in some noise breakup by using this noise node. So if I preview this noise, we'll see all I'm doing here is I'm taking a time input using that and adding it to the world position. So now we have this animated 3D noise, which is basically a noise that's just moving through the world. And now once our sunlight is shining through this, we get some really crisp God rays with this 3D noise animating through it, which gives us a lot of life and movement. So now you should understand exactly how volumetric fog works. But now let's take a look at a couple different creative examples on how you can art direct your fog to change the lighting and cinematography of your own scenes. So I created this scene from a one hour environment challenge at last year's SIGGRAPH, where we had one hour to create an environment from nothing but Quixel assets. And I took advantage of the volumetric fog system. So this entire scene is made from just four different Quixel assets and just trying to reuse them and create an interesting composition out of this parallel mirror dimension type world. But let's take a closer look at how the volumetrics are set up. But in this interior scene, it's the same as we had before where we have this exponential height fog. I left the fog density at 0.02. And then if I look at any one of these spotlights, you can see that I've just cranked up the volumetric scattering intensity to 10. And looking back at this project, one thing I didn't even realize, when you add a new spotlight into your scene, the cast volumetric shadow is actually turned off by default. So if you look through here, if I just crank this volumetric scattering intensity, it'll actually just clip through objects. So when I bring this through our wall here, we can see that it actually just clips right through, but you have to check this to true to make sure that everything calculates correctly. Another thing worth noting here with spotlights, let me turn this scattering intensity to something crazy, like 60, so we can really start to see this. One thing that I like to do a lot with spotlights is change this outer cone angle to something really small, like 20, to really focus in that beam of light. If I aim this at the ground, you'll see we'll actually get a really bright beam of light. But our volumetric intensity doesn't quite scale with that. So if I made this bigger, you'll need to make sure that you have a wide enough cone angle where you're affecting enough voxels in the volumetric grid for it to show up correctly in your scene. But hopefully this scene gives you a really good idea of how you can take different lights, move them around and change their angles and the way they're projected to give you really strong light direction and a sense of composition in your scenes. And if I toggle on and off the volumetrics in this shot, you can see how big of a difference it makes in a dramatic scene just like this. All right, now let's step up our game one more level and I'll show you how to render out your volumetrics separately so that you can composite them together with some Hollywood level VFX techniques that I'll show you in Nuke in just a second. So I have this scene from this Mr. Freeze short film that I'm putting together. And we have his wife, Nora, here. And the idea is to put her inside of this cryogenic ice chamber. But having materials that are refractive, like ice, are really hard to get out of any render engine quickly. So the fastest way, in my opinion, is going to be rendering out a couple of different AOVs so that we can assemble everything together in comp. So I have my volume light here that I can just toggle on and off. So to render out our volumetrics, I'm actually gonna have to render this out in three different passes. The first one is gonna be just disabling this volumetric light entirely. So we're gonna just disable this from the scene. To make sure that a light doesn't show up inside of Movie Render Queue, you have to make sure that you uncheck either Effects World or Visible. Just hiding it here in the outliner is not going to hide it from a Movie Render Queue render. I'm gonna render out with our path tracing settings here. After that, I'm going to enable this volume light and I'm actually going to disable all of the other lights in our scene. 
So I have a preset that I made here after testing out some settings, but the main thing you'll want to do when rendering out volumetrics is you'll want to crank your spatial sample count and increase your temporal sample count to at least four. Uh, it'll just be a little bit of micro flickering if you don't use these settings. So now we want to render out two different passes. Just go up to the add settings button and add a lighting only pass and a detail lighting pass. And you'll understand why when we get to the composite. So now we'll render that out of movie render queue. And one last thing to know, if you've animated a camera in Unreal, you can just right click that camera inside of sequencer and go to export. And then you can export that as an FBX file, which I've kind of done for all of these cameras already. And through making this project, I found some really nice ways to render out AOVs and good movie render queue configs. So comment down below if you want me to cover that in a future video. Now we have our render here in Nuke. I just went ahead and added a nice defocus to it with a nice anamorphic kernel. Now we have a photographic quality to some of our spec hits and things like that. But now let's go to our volumetric render. So I'm just shuffling out our two passes, our detail lighting and our lighting only passes. And if we take a look at this, our volumetric detail lighting pass, it has our volumetrics, but it also has the light that's cast onto our skin, the diffuse lighting. So the lighting only pass isolates that diffuse light on her. And through a really simple operation of just subtracting this from the other, we're just taking this image and subtracting it from our volume image, we'll get a clean render where the volumetrics are isolated by themselves. And when compositing, I always, always try to use live action footage in one way or another. So a really cool thing we can do is combine our volumetrics with live action footage. So I'm just multiplying this by this lingering fog element. So here I've imported my camera. I've taken this video clip and just put it on an image plane in 3D space so that it tracks to the motion of the original camera. And now by combining these two renders together, we have a really unique photorealistic pass that we can now combine with our path traced beauty render and have believable volumetrics in our scene. And if you render out a depth pass, you can also get even more creative and precise by wrapping different steam elements around your footage based on the depth of the shot itself. So even if you didn't get exactly what you wanted out of the volumetrics, you could use a technique like this to wrap different stock elements around your scene in a really believable way. And here's a look at the finished renders. So I hope this opened your mind to the possibilities of AOVs, volumetrics, and why I use Unreal Engine. So do me a favor, leave a like if you learned something new and subscribe to the channel if you wanna learn more. We just wrapped a music video for the band Tesseract where we did five minutes of a samurai sword fight animation doing motion capture ourselves and creating everything in engine. And I can't wait to share more of my filmmaking journey inside of Unreal.